Hello and welcome to the Royal Road School of Carmelite Prayer, where we are currently studying the fourth book of the Catechism on Christian Prayer. And at this time, we are in the second section of the fourth book, which is a commentary on the Our Father. And we are looking at Article 3 today and focusing specifically on the seven petitions. And today, We are turning our attention to Hallowed Be Thy Name. The term to hallow means recognize as holy. This petition is taught to us by Jesus as a desire. Beginning with this first petition to our Father, asking the Father that his name be made holy draws us into his plan that we might be holy and blameless before him in love. God reveals his name by accomplishing his work. His work is realized for us and in us only if his name is hallowed by us and in us. The holiness of God is the center of his eternal mystery. In making man in his image, God crowned him with glory and honor. But by sinning, man fell short of the glory of God. From then on, God manifests his holiness by revealing his name to restore man to the image of his creator. In the promise to Abraham, God commits himself, but without disclosing his name. He begins to reveal it to Moses and makes it known clearly before the eyes of of the whole people when he saves them from the Egyptians. From the covenant of Sinai onward, this people is his own, and it is to be a holy nation because the name of God dwells in it. In spite of the holy law that God gives them, you shall be holy for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. And although the Lord shows patience, the people turn away and profane his name among nations. Finally, in Jesus, the name of the Holy God is given to us as Savior. This is the heart of his priestly prayer, Holy Father, for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be consecrated in truth. At the end of Christ's Passover, the Father gives him the name that is above all names. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In baptism, we have been washed, sanctified, and justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. Our Father calls us to holiness. Both his glory and our life depend on the hallowing of his name in us and by us. Such is the urgency of our first petition. This sanctification of his name among the nations depends inseparably on our life and on our prayer. We ask God to hallow his name, which by its own holiness saves and makes holy all creation. It is this name that gives salvation to a lost world. But we ask that this name of God should be hallowed in us through our actions. For God's name is blessed when we live well, but blasphemed when we live wickedly. 
When we say, Hallowed be thy name, we ask that it should be hallowed in us who are in, a, in him, but also we ask that it be hallowed in all men, even our enemies. This petition embodies all the others. Like the six petitions that followed, it is fulfilled by the prayer of Christ. In his priestly prayer, Jesus asks, Holy Father, protect in your name those whom you have given me. Amen. So we have just looked at the first petition in the Our Father, Hallowed be thy name, and next we will turn our attention to thy kingdom come. I hope this study is helping you and blessing you. God bless you and yours. Amen.